So I hacked my Miss Pac-Man arcade one up machine. And in this video, I'm going to show you what I did, what I plan to do, and what it means for the future of hacking an arcade one up device. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. All right, what is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now you've obviously clicked on this video to find out exactly what I did to hack my arcade one-up machine and I plan on telling you guys everything but first consider subscribing to the channel. The hack that I did in this video is just part of one of at least three or four different hacks and future videos that I'm going to be doing. Now full disclosure, the part specifically in this hack is more of a proof of concept and I'm not going to be releasing that publicly but I hope to release a proper hack in the future for everyone to use themselves but we will talk a little bit more about that in the video. So what exactly did I do? Well essentially I did a complete ROM swap on the built-in firmware. Now my machine was the Walmart version of Miss Pac-Man which means that it came with four games. Miss Pac-Man, Super Pac-Man, Dig Dug, and Pac-Mania. And to be honest I hadn't really put much thought into hacking these machines, but when Arcade 1UP released the updated firmware fixes for the really bad blur effect that they use on their machines, I got curious and started playing around with the firmware and kind of dug in a little bit. Now to my surprise, or maybe not really to my surprise, but there was absolutely no security on the firmware, like nothing at all. Anyone could go onto the Arcade 1UP website, navigate to the software updates page, download the firmware with the side loading tools already included and modify the firmware. No encryption, no security, nothing. You could literally open up the firmware with 7-zip, look at everything, and even extract anything you want right out of there. And just to give you guys an example of that, if you don't have the NES Mega Man ROMs, no problem, Arcade 1UP has got you covered. Just download the firmware update for the Mega Man plug and play console, open up the firmware with 7-zip, navigate to the games folder and extract the games. And there you have it, Mega Man 1 through 6 on NES, extracted right from the firmware. And yes, it's really that simple. Kind of crazy to think about it. Now back to the Miss Pac-Man mod. While I was looking around, I went into the games folder and saw that Arcade 1UP left like 14 different game ROMs in there. Even though the machines only were supposed to have four games accessible from the main menu, and it was at this point where I was like, okay, maybe I can actually work with this and do something here, and I think it might be pretty easy. Now keep in mind that these ROMs can't simply be extracted and used as a normal ROM on your PC through RetroArch or a different emulator, and that's because these are formatted specifically for a proprietary commercial emulator, so you can't just export them and use them on any other device. But each of the games built into the actual firmware is correctly formatted to run on these boards. Now I'd guess that Arcade 1UP builds their firmwares like this just simply so they can recycle the same firmware, change out art assets, maybe pick some different games, slap it onto a new machine, and ship that out to a bunch of new users. But the fact that there is no security leaves the door wide open for people like me, so with an opportunity in hand, I decided to take it. Now I did reach out to some of my close developer friends and we broke down the firmware, made some minor code changes and recompiled it. Now this took a little trial and error, but after two or three attempts we did get it working correctly and I looked at the list of ROMs included in the firmware and picked one that I believe was never included with any package for Miss Pac-Man. So I chose Galaga and I essentially swapped Pac-Mania with it. Now, for the purposes of this proof of concept, I didn't bother replacing artwork or anything like that. I just wanted to focus on getting Galaga to launch. And as you guys can actually see in this very video, I was successful. The game played 100% correctly. Controls worked exactly right. Volume was working. And I was even able to turn on and off the crummy scanline filtering feature that Arcade 1UP keeps using on their devices to make their games look bad. But you are probably wondering to yourself, what exactly does this mean? Like, cool, you're able to play Galaga on your machine, no big deal. You're not supposed to, but whatever, what's next? Well, as I said earlier in the video, I am planning to release a few more videos with different hacks that we are actually working on for these boards. 
The next step is to find a way to create a firmware that unlocks all 14 games specific to this board. I'm going to essentially turn my Miss Pac-Man from a 4-in-1 to a 14-in-1 machine, all without needing to quote-unquote back up my own games because Arcade 1UP very politely provided me with a whole host of games built right into the firmware. This next hack will technically be the first and only way to get both Miss Pac-Man and Pac-Man on the same device running natively on their hardware. Okay, so even then, that's kind of cool and all, but what if you want to play something that's not included on the firmware? Well, hold on to your horses, folks. That's when we get into stages three and four of the hack. The reality is that the hack in this video isn't something that I can release publicly, nor would the 14 in one hack for legal reasons. But when we do stages three and four, I could and actually plan to release those. We are working on a way to get RetroArch running on the board. Now this may require a custom kernel injection, or maybe not, but it will require some effort to get this done. The idea would be to add a launcher in the main menu for RetroArch, and then the end user, all you would really need to do is grab an OTG adapter and a USB drive, preload it up with all of your arcade game collection, plug that into the micro USB port on the back of the board, and access and play pretty much everything you want natively on the hardware through RetroArch. Now this would actually save a lot of time and money for those who modify their arcade one-ups to put a Raspberry Pi or something like that in there. Now the idea here is obviously to create a universal hack that can be used on almost any arcade one-up device. Now this is going to take a bit of time, and as we work towards those stages of the hack, I'm going to provide updated videos and information on my channel. So consider subscribing to the channel, turning on notifications so you don't miss out on those videos. But that is pretty much all I've got for you guys in this video. I do want to mention, obviously, we are going to need to grab hold and access as many different Arcade 1UP PCBs as possible. So if you or anyone you know has spare PCB boards for Arcade 1UP devices with a micro USB port on it, please let me know in the comment section down below so I can arrange to either buy them or have them sent over to the developers so that way we can continue to make a mod that'll work across as many devices as possible. Also, let me know down in the comment section what your thoughts are. Is there something specific that you want to see? Does a hack like this even interest you in any way? Let me know down below. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up before you leave and share the video with anyone you think may be interested in this project. Thank you so very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.